Hello everyone, here is Mathieu Duvaux. I am right now in Long Island, Bahamas, preparing for the Vertical Blue depth competition. So I decided to record my whole routine of stretching and I will record some comments to explain you what I do and why. It's gonna be full body stretch, full long stretching and empty long stretching. I'll let you enjoy and if you have any question, write in the comments. Bye. All right, so I always start standing up with a shoulder mobility. So a little bit of stretching, left arm, a little bit of bending, and then I'm gonna do right arm. For this stretch, I don't hold my breath, so I'm breathing at the same time, okay? It's just a little warm up on the shoulders. I just use my range of motion, I stretch slightly, I never go into any pain or discomfort. That's very important, you need to respect your range of motion and your body. You're at this stage right now, you don't push it too much, right? Then I'm gonna do some roll with my shoulders, backward and then forward. That's gonna help to loosen up the shoulders and increase the range of motion again that will be very helpful for any overhead position like this. Next, I'm gonna take a full inhale, do a couple of pack, and hold my breath in a, a narrow position, standing up like this. I do packing because I pack during my dive, because I'm doing some fairly deep dives. I'm aiming for this competition between 90 and 100 meters, so it makes sense. If you're a 30 or 40 meter diver, maybe it's not very necessary to pack, and in this case, maybe you should not pack too much in your stretching. Uh, again, when I pack, I do it with a very small percentage of my maximum, so I'm not pushing my lungs, I don't feel any pressure. All right, so I did my first hold like this, then I'm gonna do another one. Full inhale, a couple of pack, and a row position. And here what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put my hips forward and I'm gonna try to um, round my upper back. So like a front kick monofin position, I'm gonna squeeze my shoulder blade outside. So that, that means creating space in between my shoulder blade to not have them touching. And I'm gonna try to hold on my toes. So it's a bit of balance work at the same time. It's not easy. It's actually quite difficult. Yeah, I like this. I'm more stable here. I'm holding my breath on that one. Those stretch, you can find them in the much enough uh, dry stretching that I programmed uh, over the 12 week. You will have always in mobility every three weeks you have those stretch. All right, and let's go for another one. Full inhale, packing, and just a normal hold, arrow position again. The arrow position is very important for me because I'm doing mostly monofin for this competition and it's one of my weak points. So by increasing the range of motion, the mobility, and also working a bit on the full long aspect, I make it more comfortable simply to go down or go up with this position. So here what I did, I did also a couple of uh, stretch on the side. So like 10 seconds on the left and 10 seconds on the right to start to open my intercostal muscles. Now I'm gonna do a last one and I'm gonna do this uh, slow rotation in a row position. So here the goal is to go slow and control, then you will feel really your muscles moving little by little. I do it clockwise and counterclockwise. You should not feel any pain here. And also if you feel very dizzy and you feel that you're gonna black out, <laughs> definitely stop, <laughs> okay. All 
All right, next I'm gonna do a stretch that will involve my hands on a pole and pushing all the way down to my heel. So then I'm gonna start to stretch again my shoulder, but at the same time, my, my calf. The calves are very important, especially for bifins, but also for any discipline in freediving. I switch leg, here I'm breathing. I'm not holding my breath. You should feel the stretch in your calf on doing this position, that's for sure. All right. Next, that's something new I didn't do before, but I do it since I have uh, that possibility with that uh, lovely cottage. I use the fence to actually get into a kind of squat position and really pull myself um, and open, like stretch my lats mostly and a little bit of uh, shoulder as well. It's actually very nice. <laughs> it's a very cool stretch uh, that makes you feel really good. All right, next, I'm gonna get into my quad, quadriceps, my thigh. So then I will do a very simple stretch, holding my foot. You should feel the stretch in the muscle of your thigh and just one hand in front to keep the balance. If you don't feel it, maybe do it on the floor, on the yoga mat. But for me, at my level, I feel it. So I think it's enough. And I decide to do it like that. So then I can work also on my balance, but I could also hold the fence if I was not very stable. All right, next, I use the fence again for a little leg stretch. Um, I'm not sure which part exactly here, but I feel definitely my hamstring and maybe my hip flexor a little bit. So again, it's not something I generally do, but since I have the fence, I'm like, oh, let's use it. It's, it doesn't hurt, right? <laughs> again, I will say it many, many times during this video, you never push yourself in a point where you feel any pain. It can be slight discomfort, like due to the stretching, but you should not feel in pain. Nice, little massage on the leg. All right, next, we're gonna do some squat position. So dropping slowly into a proper squat position, as to the grass, like we say, so that means I'm still active, but very low. I try to keep my upper body straight and my back straight, so to not completely arch. And then I'm gonna do a couple of squat rotation. Nice, and then up, and then a couple of air squat, just to pump a little bit the legs. Just four, five. All right. Next, full inhale, a couple of pack again, and we're gonna go to arm rotation forward. So this is from the Molchanov's breathing gymnastic from Alexei. It's very efficient, uh, very nice rib cage work and shoulder. So the idea is to not go too fast and to do a full, how to say, to open your chest on one part of the rotation and then to round a little bit your back on the other part. So you really have the best, the biggest range of motion. I think it's quite clear on the video. Um, you can see my chest moving forward and backward a little bit. Okay, and then I do it exactly the same, but arm rotation backward this time. Be careful, you can feel dizzy on those stretches because of the blood pressure that will change uh, quite fast, if I understand. 
So maybe if you take too much air in your lungs or if you're not used to packing or if you pack too much, you might feel quite dizzy. So be careful in this case, it's better to not uh, take too much air, right? Me, I'm going here in a place where it's very comfortable. Uh, I'm doing generally around five to 10 pack, knowing that my maximum packing ability is around 40, okay? So here I'm doing another exercise from the Motion of Breathing Gymnastic. It's called, called Hug, where you basically hug yourself and you try to grab your spine uh, as much as you can with your hands. So that means you do a very tight hug. And what I do as well, I go a little bit lower so then I can compress even better my rib cage on that one. Then I'm doing another one here. This one I do it without packing. Uh, it's like imagine you have a little medicine ball in your hand and you're, you're doing some rotation like this. Um, I don't take too much air in my lungs in this one because I go quite fast and quite strong on the motion and it helps me to loosen up a little bit my spine. And sometimes even uh, I can hear my bones crackling a bit, but again, without any pain. It's, uh, it's, very, it's very gentle on my body, um, but it's a nice stretch that I do very regularly actually. All right, another full inhale, a couple of pack, and then I'm gonna do the chest opening. Again, from the Molchan of Breathing Gymnastic. It's a very, very good chest opener exercise. I really enjoy that one. I do generally around 10 repetitions. All right, next, drop on the yoga mat and we're gonna work on the ankle. So if you follow the dry training from uh, the base training of uh, Mochanov's free diving education, you might see uh, the exercise I give on ankle that are based on um, a yoga block to go gently elevating the, the knees slowly. But here I'm going like a bit more hardcore. I go directly with my full body weight uh, stretching my ankle and just holding with my hands. If this is painful, do it with just a yoga block in front of your knees and your knees uh, laying on it, okay? You need to go little by little on stretching. It's one of the key. Consistency and little by little. All right, next I'm gonna work a bit on my Armstring with a very classic stretch. I am breathing here. I'm not holding my breath. Okay. And I'm going just to the edge of uh, discomfort. So it's still okay. It's not amazingly nice <laughs> because I'm quite tight on my armstring, like a lot of people, especially guys. Um, but I'm definitely not in pain. Then I'm gonna do the other leg. You can see it's uh, quite nice weather in Bahamas. Very, very, very lucky to be here. It's my first edition of Vertical Blue. It was my dream since I started freediving and to the competition, I was like, wow, one day I'm gonna make it to Vertical Blue. And here I am, it's, it's amazing, I'm super happy. Whatever happened in the comp, so far I, I did good training, but who knows with the stress, I will be happy anyway, it's great. All right, next I'm gonna do this little stretch, I don't know exactly how to call it, but basically I grab my feet in front, I try to keep my spine straight, and I will just uh, try to extend my spine up as much as I can, keeping my feet very close to my crotch. Nice, then let me see. 
Okay, I'm gonna go to Pigeon Pose. If you do a bit of yoga, you might be familiar with this position. I will start uh, low like this, a low Pigeon Pose. Try to keep your hips squared. I'm breathing again. I'm not holding my breath here. And I will end the position on a high pigeon pose, extending my chest. All right, and going for the other side. Low position. I'm trying to breathe, slowly inhale, slowly exhale, try to find relaxation, go a little bit deeper in the stretch, but again, not pushing it. And I finish again on a high position pigeon stretch like this. Still breathing. Ah, nice. <laughs> okay, next I will do some uh, cat cow, if I remember the name right. Where I will do full inhale, couple of back, and bring my hips slightly forward and then um, separate my shoulder blade by pushing my spine up. Imagine I have a little rope in between my shoulder blade and someone is pulling it and then my body is like twisting like this. And then I will exhale to a complete arch back. And then again, inhale, separate my shoulder blade, push up. to exhale and arch back. All right, I did it three times here, but you can adjust to whatever. This routine is just an idea of, to give you an idea of what I do before my dives. Uh, it's not the truth. It's very different for everyone, okay? Here I'm doing something interesting. It's an exercise that I got from Alexei as well. Um, it's basically the same position of uh, sh like pushing in between your shoulder blade up. So you round your, your upper back and playing with the, the mobility of your spine to do some kind of monofin front kick, having your feet extended so you're on your ankle. Uh, it's a very, if you do it properly, I don't have great range of motion, but I do my best. If you do it properly, you should feel that your abdominal muscle will be on fire. <laughs> it's very effective. So I do it a bit like warm up for monofin. Then what I'm doing here is uh, upward facing dog to downward facing dog. The thing is, I do upward facing dog on full inhale with a couple of pack. Again, if you don't pack, don't use packing, eh? just do a full inhale, especially if it's the first time you do that. So upward facing dog, my legs are not touching the floor and I am on my ankles and then transition to exhale to downward facing dog. Okay, a third one, full inhale, pack, 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 pack. Upward facing dog. If you feel dizzy, take less air. Transition to downward facing dog, working on my hamstring, on my uh, shoulders. All right, and a little nice exit. Good, already a lot of work done on full body stretch and full long stretching. Now, 
a little full inhale, uh, full long stretching, spine uh, twist. So this one, most people know it already. It's quite uh, classic. Twist of the spine on full inhale. I keep it like 10, 15 seconds and then I switch. And I do the other side. You try as much as you can to keep your back straight when you do that and to not twist your neck too much. There's no point. Keep your neck in line with your shoulders. All right, next I will use a tool. Uh, generally at home I use a complete yoga wheel, but here I don't have it. I have only this little, uh, this I don't know the name, this little uh, piece of equipment to create a little bump and I will use it to do chest opening exercise. So I will put it on my upper back, not my lower back. I will do a full inhale, couple of packing, and then I will let go completely on it. Having my, having my arms in a row position and try to really release the tension so then my spine can um, get a bit more rounded and my chest can open even more. So I'm working on chest opening, intercostal muscles, diaphragm, almost everything here for the thoracic cage. All right, recovery. And then I'm going to do another one with a little bit more packing. So if you don't pack, for example, you can do a first one with like 60% of your capacity and then a second one with 80% of your capacity and then a third one with 100% of your capacity and even a fourth one with, uh, again, 100% of your capacity. It should feel okay, you should not feel any pain on that one, especially on your lo lower back. You should not load your lower back here. And for your information here, we don't really see, but my butt is touching the floor. All right, recovery. Keep the good habits. Every time you do breath hold, do good recovery breathing. Exactly the same way you will do it for a deep dive. So then your brain gets used to it. I personally do it always exactly the same. And I hope if unfortunately I get hypoxic, that's gonna save me. Keep the stretch generally between 20 and 40 seconds. It depends how I feel. If I feel uncomfortable or if I feel dizzy or if I feel I have contraction coming, I definitely breathe because there's no point to push it in that direction. All right. Next, I will do my stretching completely related to packing. I will do packing stretching. So this is only if you already pack in your dive and you want to warm up that part before going to dive. So what I do, I took it, I will be very honest, <laughs> I took it from Eric Fata uh, in his book, uh, Holistic Free Diving. It's a very interesting uh, concept. Eric Fata is a, an incredible free diver that did a lot of discoveries and tries a uh, long time ago um, and uh, he made a very interesting book with a lot of ideas to, to explore. And for the packing, I do a full inhale, then I do 10 pack, knowing that my maximum packing ability is like 40. 
and then I do 10 movement of my diaphragm. So I try to put my diaphragm as high as possible. So my chest expand and then as low as possible. And then again, and I do this 10 times with my hold of packing. Um, again, this packing for me feel like a normal full inhale. I'm not feeling pressurized at all, okay? Um, then I hold a little bit more when I'm done. I do a couple more pack and then I do exhale and recovery breathing. After that, I rest a little bit, relax. And then I'm gonna take another full inhale. We can see my diaphragm and then my chest. And then I'm gonna pack to the point where I'm gonna start to feel that I'm a bit more full. So generally that one, it's gonna be around 20 or 25 back. And when I reach that point, I will hold a little bit, but very short. And then I will exhale slowly, directly to release the pressure and do my recovery breathing. Then I will rest a little bit more, relax and go for another round. And for this one, I will go a bit more. I will go maybe 30 or 35 pack, but then I will not hold. I will exhale straight when I reach the number and I will exhale slowly and, do, and then do my recovery breathing. And I might do it one or two more times like that. On this whole um, routine of uh, stretching for packing for stretching, I will never feel pain in my thoracic cage. That's very important. You should always stretch in your range. You should not go further, okay? And this is very different for everyone. So the number of pack is completely irrelevant because some people do very, very small pack and they will do like 60 of those. And some people do huge one. And after 10 or 15 or 20, they start to feel already like very full. So be careful, you can hurt yourself with packing. Uh, there's a couple of uh, studies that show that it's not that great for the lungs, especially if you go too hard. So it's a choice you make knowing the consequences. I decided to use it, but with parsimony. <laughs> like, uh, I'm not diving or doing any breath hold activities with more than 60% of what I can do so far. All right, and then my last one here in that series is gonna be a full inhale, couple of back, and then dropping in a row position, holding my breath, and then Exhale, recovery breathing. All right, that's uh, basically it for the, the full long stretching part. After that, in my routine, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do visualization. I'm gonna visualize the dive I'm gonna do in a couple of hours. And for this, I will use my, um, my nose clip and I will do it either in a sitting position like this or in a uh, laying down position on my uh, yoga mat. So right now what I'm gonna do, it's, uh, it's quite simple. I'm gonna close my eyes, put my nose clip on with a slight opening so then I can actually get some air out if I simulate some, uh, some equalization. And I will visualize myself on my noodle, on the rope, doing my breathing preparation, hearing the timing before starting. I will have three minutes, two minutes, one minute, 30 seconds, uh, 20 seconds, 10, 5, up to official top. And then when I have official top, I start to do my full inhale and 
my packing that I do during my dive, so I really visualize exactly what I'm gonna do. Then I do a couple of um, friends at equalization, and I visualize myself going down with my, my monofin uh, for the first part of the dive. Then at one point, I will load a mouthfeel, um, and I will do it actually for real. <laughs> Um, I will visualize my arms going on the side of my body. I'm still kicking slowly. Then I do refill of my mouth fill. And then I will start my free fall. At this point, I don't hold my breath the whole time because I don't want to do <laughs> a three minute uh, dry breath hold at this stage. So I'm, I'm doing some recovery breathing at the same time. But in my head, I'm still diving, I'm still doing what I need to do. I visualize what I visualize during a dive as well. Like it can be at the moment, it's very cute. It's um, the smiling face of my little son <laughs> that is three months old and just uh, joined me uh, on the island lately. So that's really cool and positive image to have. Then I visualize my alarm ringing. So in this case, I'm visualizing a 95 meter dive. So I'm at 90 meter, everything is good. My equalization is top notch. And then I hear my I'm preparing to turn. I grab the tennis ball, I grab the tag. And then I start my way up nicely. Everything feels great. I'm in control, I'm not rushing, <laughs> which sometimes can be a problem for me. <laughs> And then I bring my arms up and I have this nice monofin kick. I see the beam in front of me, the line, everything is well. I pass the thermocline. I hear my alarm on the way up, 20 meter. I'm almost there, my safety is here. And then I get out of the blue hole. I start to have more light. I just do a final glide start to release a bit of air a couple of meters before the surface and then grab the line, do my recovery breathing, very strong, very nice, remove my nose clip and gives a nice okay sign to my safety. So that's basically what I do when I do a visualization of a dive prior to my dive or prior to the competition. It's something that works really well and I really suggest to anyone, whatever the depth, it's something that we should learn to practice from a level one freediving course because it's extremely powerful and it's going to be part of your life if you want to go deeper or longer. So we could see me visualizing grabbing the tag here. <laughs> it's quite funny. Here I'm doing my, my movement, my ondulation. Nice monofin kick going up. I keep my eyes closed when I do this, of course. I guess I'm close to the surface right now. Oh yeah, final one, glide, grab the line, recovery breathing. Good, smile, okay sign, good job. <laughs> Hopefully that's what will happen during the dive, during the, the competition, that's what we want. Beautiful, strong dive like that. Nice, so that's it for the visualization part. Now I'm gonna get into the, la the final part of my uh, routine, which is empty long stretching. So for this, I'm gonna remove my shirt so you can see a bit what I do with my uh, belly. I like to do it after 
the visualization because I'm way more relaxed and my heart rate is lower and I can actually hold my stretch for empty lung stretching a bit longer and nicer. So I try to keep my relaxation and to, to stay in the right space in my mind. I'm gonna do full inhale, couple of packing, and then full exhale, bending forward. Hold my breath, go back to uh, a cross leg position like this, and then do a first empty long stretch. I keep my eyes closed here. I try to release all the tension of my body, except my diaphragm that I keep sucking up like that. I will hold generally between 15 and 25 seconds for the first one. Then I do recovery breathing. And I'm gonna go for another one. Full inhale. All right, full inhale, diaphragm, chest, couple of pack to reopen my alveoli. That's something I read. I don't know if it's uh, if it's real or not, but in case I do it in between my empty lung stretching, I do a couple of packing, and then full exhale, hold my breath. I do one or two reverse pack on the second one, and I hold like this again, slightly longer. One thing I always try to avoid when I do empty lung stretching is to tense the rest of my body too much. So you can see even my shoulders are quite relaxed and I definitely don't want to have contraction. So if I feel urge to breathe coming and contraction coming, I'm gonna stop. Also, when I do my first recovery breath, I try to do it gently and not too big and then to increase the size of the recovery breathing little by little to not traumatize my lungs too much. Because again, here I'm doing this, but in maybe two hours, I will be doing a very deep dive. I mean, a very deep and for who, but <laughs> it's still quite, uh, quite a lot of pressure for the lungs. I'm gonna be way past my re residual volume. So I want to warm my lungs and my rib cage, but I don't want to traumatize my tissues. And then another one, this time I will start massaging my ribs. So I will start with the left side. I will go quite deep inside and then I will play a little bit with the, the edge, opening, going deeper inside, this kind of, uh, of movement. When I do that, I don't feel any pain or any discomfort. It's now quite flexible because I do it since a couple of years, uh, very regularly. If you're new to that, you need to be very gentle. But if you feel that everything is all right and it moves properly, you can go deeper into the tissues. Be careful, you don't have nerves in your lungs. So you might not feel if you're injuring yourself. So it's always better to be conservative than to go too hard. Huh? Then I do a bit of relaxation again and I do full inhale couple of packing, all the way down to full exhale, hold, empty long stretching and then I go for exactly the same thing but on the other side. Generally my right side is a little bit more stiff than the left side, so I go sometimes a bit more gentle. Right, and recovery breathing. All right. 
slight bit of relaxation in between each hold. And then full inhale, couple of packing again. And full exhale. Hold. And now I will do rib massage again, but this time with both, both sides at the same time. I will open a little bit my ribs, compress my ribs a bit, go inside, go on the edge. You see, it starts to be quite uh, flexible. And this was not done in one day. It's uh, years of this practice that will make your chest uh, more flexible. Uh, in addition to regular diving, FRC diving, many, many things that I do to work on depth adaptation. If you're stuck at home and you have no way to work on, on like in-water adaptation, I would say try to do this like a couple of times per, per week. It's definitely going to help uh, to at least keep a little bit of flexibility in your chest. Just be aware of what is okay and what is too much. For stretching, full long stretching, empty long stretching, full body stretch, the key is uh, regularity, con consistency. It's much better to do it five minutes every day than to do it two hours, one time per month, you know? So, so yeah. Okay, here I did full inhale, full exhale again, empty long stretching, and then I do rib compression with my forearms. So that's a very efficient way also to work on the compression and, and mobility of the, the rib cage. Um, you could see that it's quite mobile. Uh, again, this is something that will come with time and with practice. Also, some people are much stiffer than others. I have some friends, they never stretch and they are extremely, extremely um, mobile and uh, flexible in the thoracic cage and some people that stretch a lot and they are very stiff. Uh, but in any way, if you do it properly and regularly, it's not going to hurt. All right, and then full inhale, a couple of pack, full exhale. And empty long stretching, euro position. Moving a little bit left, right. followed by a recovery breathing. Another one, full inhale, cut of pack, followed by full exhale, hold, and then I'm gonna do some movement of my diaphragm as high as possible, as low as possible. So here in a way I'm simulating some type of contraction on residual volume. Be gentle on this one. If you feel pressure in your throat or in this area, you're doing it too much. Maybe you're not ready to do this type of, uh, of movement yet, okay? And then followed by recovery breathing. Now I'm gonna put back my nose clip on my nose, slightly open. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do an empty lung mouth fill charge and a pulsing of my mouth fill, trying to get a bit of urge to breathe, but on empty lung maybe a couple of contraction and to keep control of my glottis and my soft palate at the same time. So basically to keep a good equalization when you start to be a bit tense due to CO2 accumulation on empty lungs and to try to not lose it and to stay in control. It's not a very easy exercise. And I will go all the way until my mouth feel is completely gone through my nose. It 
it's basically what happened for me when I do an early turn on the dive. If I'm a bit uh, tense on the way down, I build tension. And most of the time, at one point, my soft palate will close because of that. So it's a way to work a little bit on it, on dry and to prepare before my dive. And it's completely mental. <laughs> it's completely mental. I think that's the biggest challenge of deep free diving, as I can see it at my level, start to be, it's not physical anymore. It's not technique because the technique at this point is good. We know how to move everything and we know what we're doing. The problem is here. The mental is the very, very tough part to deal with. So that's what I'm working on right now. And this is my challenge for Vertical Blue personally. So now I'm going to finish um, the stretching with this uh, exercise that I do at the end very gently. I'm going to put like a half bottle rolled into a big towel so it's, uh, it's soft. And I will just lay with the, um, the bottle in the, in the middle of my chest like this, like around this area to just compress gently and I will go a bit on the left, a bit on the right. I will keep some weight on my hands so then it's not my whole body that is crushing toward the bottle, especially before a dive. I would not like to, to inflame myself, but it's just a little bit of compression like that. And uh, so far, didn't have any problem, didn't hurt, uh, and I think it helps a little bit. So yeah, so far it's working. Now, um, I hope you enjoyed my comments on, on this little routine. It's my vision of it. It doesn't mean that it's for everyone. And uh, maybe there's some stuff that can be improved for sure or done differently. Uh, maybe some things will not make too much sense for you, but it does for me. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to, to put a comment and to ask. I will try to, to read and to answer you. And uh, yeah, I wish everyone a beautiful day and hopefully everyone will be able to watch the competition live on uh, July 13th. And uh, hopefully I'm gonna have some good dive with all the other athletes and it's gonna be a beautiful edition of Vertical Blue 2021. So thank you for watching and see you soon. Bye bye.